An elegant weapon for a more civilized age. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an elegant weapon episode 386. My name is Jay, J.M. Clark, J. the Jedi Ross, Ross Jedi Jade. As always, it is so wonderful to have you all back here in the as of yet unnamed podcast studio. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, it's wonderful to have all you beautiful babies hanging out. Here we are, first episode of 2021, first episode of the 10th year of an elegant weapon. It's absolute madness. I cannot believe that I have been doing this long enough for a tiny little thing to grow into this. Uh, the Padawan is hanging out tonight. He's doing a little bit of drawing while we're going to be chatting. Uh, and we'll get to see what kind of stuff he comes up with this evening. Uh, but Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you're doing all right. Here we do with the, uh, the inevitableness here. Uh, you know, when you click to expand and then you hear yourselves and then you hit the thing. All right, we're good to go, kids. Uh, welcome back. It's great to be here. It was a crazy 2020 there, but we got through it and we're going to do the 2021 now. Uh, I can't go on without addressing a little bit of the nuttiness that has gone down. Uh, I hope everybody's okay out there in Washington and all around um, America and all our American friends or family are good and safe um, and figuring things out. Uh, our love to you. Um, you know, we're just concentrating on a pandemic right now. So, uh, you know, that's what we're doing. I mentioned during the uh, intro there about the as of yet unnamed podcast studio. We're going to take care of that, and we're going to start to take care of that tonight. And it's going to all wind in with tonight's special, special guest. First guest of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a founding member, if not the founding member, and current art director of Source Point Press. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Josh Werner. Hey, it's so good to be back on the show. It's been a while awesome to have you here man it's been too long um we were privileged enough to be together at one of the last big shows of the year we both snuck in c2e2 there uh so that was the last yeah. time i got to hang out with you so crazy you remember at that show when uh, everybody was just starting to feel it just starting to fist bump you know yeah it was um it was still it was something we everybody was talking about it did i i remember people it didn't seem to reach that area at least that we didn't know that it had and everybody was kind of nervous. We're like, I wonder if there's going to affect turnouts. Um, it's been in the news the last few days, all this stuff's going on. And we were kind of just like, well, we'll take extra precautions. And, you know, we're sick of getting sick at cons. Anyway, we always get sick at conventions, right? Right, the crud. So lots of hand sanitizer and hanging out and everything. And uh, I did get sick after that show. Um, and it was the sickest I've been in a long time. And uh, I had a really bad fever. Uh, oh no the fever was so high that um uh, i was just like falling asleep while i was working at one point uh i had a, a cough that i couldn't stop and it, I, it caused me to throw up all of my laptop while ah. i was working <laughs> and looking back I'll, I'll never really know at this point like maybe i had it at some point like it, who knows but um i have a few friends like that like, who think they might have had it like january time then you know because they just had a such a bad cold that they think that might have been it you know yeah, and it's, it's ever since, you know, we've been just yeah, as a company, we've been trying to be really, really careful. Um, it's yeah, affected it's, everything. It's, it's past so year. we're at C2E2 and we have a fantastic show. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll make this brief because people who listen to this show have heard this story enough lately because it just keeps coming up in the normality of the discussions now. And that's that we were all at C2E2. We kind of felt it coming, and this was supposed to be the big year for a lot of things with SourcePoint. Um, you know, for me personally, it was supposed to be a big year in Canada. We were supposed to go right across the country and do a whole bunch of shows that we hadn't done. Uh, we had Calgary was coming up in April. Uh, Vancouver had just gone smashingly. We sold everything on the table. Uh, it was incredible. And then all of a sudden, bam, shut down. Um and what do you do, right? So 
Uh, we had Travis there on the show at one point too. Travis McIntyre, uh, head honcho of Source Point Press, and he kind of went through uh, the logistics of what went down as far as switching over to a lot of, of course, internet presence and internet business. Um, what was uh, what was it like from your perspective as art director and such, and uh, an old school guy, you know, because you came from the time like uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Source Point grew out of the grinding method. It's, it's full of grinders. It was 70 plus shows a year. And that's how things were done. And all of a sudden, all of that is taken away. Josh, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, I won't go crazy down the rabbit hole because I'm sure Travis talked about this, but I mean, everything started happening at once. We were in multiple countries and and we had products shipped all over the place. It was, we were going so hard. We spent tens of thousands of dollars just in the next month of prepping all these big shows and having all this big presence. We were, we were just breaking new ground as far as conventions go and getting bigger and bigger spaces. Um, at one point we were taking over like Dark Horse's booth. So we were getting right. a much larger space than normal. <clears throat> and uh, next thing you know, shows are canceling. Uh, I mean, we had people boots on the ground in Ireland getting off the plane to find out the show was canceled. We still have product overseas waiting for us. Like, um, it was really scary. We had to ever, we we had to say, okay, well, this month is, is isn't going to happen. Is next month going to happen? No. Okay, is two months from now going to happen? And then it just kept. It got to a point in the year where we're like, we have to change gears because we have we have no choice. Um, the, we don't know when conventions are going to come back. And uh, the, the big struggle was Diamond Comic Distributors shutting down as well. Oh, that was a uh, mess. Throwing off a printing schedule, us having to make a really tough decision. Do we keep printing comics every month and trying to stick to our release dates and try to boost our web store sales and keep getting comics in the hands of the stores that were open? And then, you know, at the risk of upsetting the stores that had no choice but to close and couldn't take new product, which was a big hot contested um, thing with the larger publishers. A lot of people are like, DC shouldn't be putting out books if I can't get them kind of thing. Um, so what we did uh, at the time, our, we shifted our concern from being about ourselves to being about the whole community, the whole industry, the shops, you know, they, they, they're the backbone of this. So we started thinking, what can we do to help? Um, so at the time, we said, well, we don't have any money, but we have product, right? We've got a warehouse. Yeah. So uh, at one point, um, we, we sent out 200 boxes of graphic novels uh, completely free to struggling retailers to sell awesome. online, to sell uh, curbside pickup, to do whatever they could uh, to make money off of them. Uh, completely free. We covered the shipping and everything. It was just to help them out. Uh, and then we started a retailer relief program. We were one of the first publishers to do it. That was amazing. Uh, where yeah. we, you could buy stuff on our web store so you could keep getting your comics. And we, we kept, we fronted the money without the diamond, you know, purchase orders. We tried to guess what they would have sold and we tried to sell them on our web store. And then you just put in the name of your comic book store that you want to promote and then the city that they're in. And we just send them a check, just free money. We're, you know, not going to, uh, we're, we're not going to, like ask for anything in return and be like, make sure you carry it next month. It, it, it doesn't even matter if they ever carried source point press. Right. Right. They were going to get that product. Um, so we, uh, we did that. And then it, it, we got opportunities to help in other ways outside the comic community too. So um, Les Garner, uh, he is the creator of apocalypse girl. Uh, he, he was extremely generous and we decided to push, we were pushing apocalypse girl really hard and it was doing really well. And we both decided to take the profits from that book and we donated them all to, um, to the emergency relief fund from uh, uh, the CDC foundation nonprofit. At the time they were still in the struggle and the battle to get masks and PPE and stuff. So we, um, we took, we just cut them a check. You know, we took our money that we would have made from that. We sent it off uh, and uh, we also I had a, a chief paramedic. This was kind of cool. Um, sometimes opportunities to help do, just to, they show up all by themselves. And uh, this chief paramedic reached out to me because he read our comics and he, he was explaining a situation. He said, uh, I've got a ton of my paramedics who are now being in quarantine, some of them in the hospital, because they caught 
uh, COVID-19 in the line of duty doing their job, like coming to get someone from their home who can't breathe, right? And next yeah. thing you know, they have it. And so um, we sent thousands of dollars of graphic novels out to, in care packages to all of these paramedics that were, um, that were in you know, the hospital or, or in quarantine as just a thank you for being awesome and putting yourself at risk. Here's something to do until you get better. Good luck. And um, that was, it was pretty cool. And then it, it suddenly kind of dawned on us like, oh no, um, this is great. Helping everybody is awesome, but we have to figure out how to keep the lights on now. We right. had just expanded into this beautiful new office right. and we, um, we, we, our income was just stifled. It was completely crushed without the conventions. It was such a uh, hard thing as far as the timing, right? Like, cause yeah, so much was exploding and going on. And like I said, there were so many plans all around the company, all around Oxi Media, which for anybody unfamiliar is the parent company of SourcePoint Press, along with N3 uh, and Deepwater Games. Um, a whole lot of crazy cool stuff uh, going on there that we can get into talking to. Um, but yeah, like, of course, it was the source point thing to do to jump into it with heart because that's what it's always been about. Um, but then you're right. You have to start thinking about business. But you guys continued to keep the heart there. And the, and the difficult thing for source point was having to take uh, that presence, that show presence, that con presence, that, you know, warm, you know, family feeling that the creators being there. Uh, you know, gave to their fans, somehow taking that and translating it into a digital world. And, you know, that I think that was a big part of the success too. And that was with your auctions that you were holding, um, you know, and just staying yeah. connected, staying connected to the fans was super important. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we, we realized like people, they didn't just come to the booth to buy a comic that they could have ordered online or they could have picked up at a local retailer. They, they did it to kind of get to know the people behind the company, get to know the creators that we would tout all around. And we, um, we wanted to find a way to replace that. Not to mention you can get things at conventions you can't get anywhere else. You can get convention exclusive variant covers. You can get sketches and original artwork and you can hear the stories behind <clears throat> these, these books and their creation. And, you get to meet some of the teams and that put them together. So the auctions were a really cool way to do that. And one of my favorite things about the auctions was, um, uh, we're taking a break on those right now, by the way, but uh, they are kind of a, they're kind of chaotic, but they're fun. And we would have a, a different guest every single time. And people would come just hang out at the auction without buying anything, just so they could listen to some of the banter and some of the stories and get to know the, the whoever the guest creator was. <clears throat> and that's that was kind of the whole point of doing this. We do also do a weekly uh, interview show called Get to the Point. Happening uh, right Chris now. Tadlock. I'm sorry that we, we had to overlap right now, a little yeah. there, Chris. I apologize. <laughs> um, but anybody who can, who's listening, you can always go find those after the fact. They immediately just show up on the Facebook page. But um, but uh, right now he's, he's interviewing Brian Dunphy. He's the artist for a, a new comic coming out called Spaced Out, which is a, a satirical Mad Magazine style, really cartoony, really funny a uh, comic that pokes Can't fun at wait the to check 60s. that one out. And uh, I did the cover art for that, actually. And it's really fun. If anybody remembers Sergeant Rock, the old Sergeant Rock comics, there's this just totally crazed madman named Sergeant Croc on the cover who's just, he's got a big cigar hanging out of his mouth and he's just spraying gunfire and there's explosions in the backgrounds and Nazis flying around. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it really sounds fun. Amazing! Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, I had fun doing that cover, and it was one of those things where it just came to us pretty much done. But they they had kind of tossed it. They didn't have a piece of cover art, and they were kind of like trying to design something together based out of interior stuff. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'll take care of this. This is going to be great. Um, but yeah. Anyway, everybody should go check that out later. Brian Dunphy is a very cool guy, and uh, I'm really excited for that book to come out. We'll have to get him to but pass yeah, so by this that, way um, soon enough too. Then. And then we started our Twitch channel because um, we also have our sister company where we make board games and really tried to develop a relationship with the consumers in a way where they could stay home, stay safe, not do their normal board game nights with their friends, but still be able to play their games and enjoy them by playing with us yeah. in real time, live. Yeah. So Super fun. Yeah, Elle took that on and 
and set up all these cameras and got a big old green screen and everybody wonderful can... games like uh oh the light's bad how do i catch the angle there claim we stream uh claim. floor plan a lot uh welcome to welcome to uh new las vegas oh i have mm -hmm. i have uh welcome to your perfect home here i gotta try yes. this one Crack classic one out there beautiful and people can uh, can can just join in and play on twitch but all by themselves if they own the game and um I do like to think, just based on some of the people who are regulars on there, that it kind of gives them something to look forward to. And we don't have a lot of that right now. You know? Sense of community, man. It's an important sense of community where people come together over something that they, you know, mutually love and have a lot of passion for. And, and you know, and it's personality. Source Point's full of personality. Deep Water's full of, you know, the whole company's full of personality. And that's, you know, why it worked on the floor. And that's why it's working on the internet. And it's fantastic. It, it, it's crazy what it's come to because I used to have a long box. In fact, I still have the long box. And there was a point because I met source point and discovered source point in 2015 so it's been about six years or so and you know i was very very proud of the fact that i had this box i had this long box that for a couple years i had every source point title there was and i was keeping <laughs> up man uh the main grab was every year at uh motor city comic-con you know what i mean and everybody was sweet enough uh you know uh and i went home with a lot of books <laughs> And now it's at a point where things have exploded. I'm lost, man. I'm trying to keep up, but the amount of stuff coming out of Source Point in the amount of, you know, still high quality stuff, it's incredible. How are like like how are you keeping up and able to do your own work? Like you're you're the art director, yet you're doing your own stuff at the same time. How do, you know, and you've given up energy drinks. How are you managing this? Oh, right. Um, that was a surprise even to me. How did I, I was living on those things. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it definitely, the, the workload has increased every single new title we bring on. It's not just send me the files and we'll send it to the printer. There's always just work and love and care that goes into every single one of these books. And the, the amount of work varies drastically because, um, we, one of the things we really do is we like to take old school professionals, get as many of those as we can, and newbies who have a lot of raw talent and not a lot of experience and give them their shot. And what comes with that is new and exciting stories, new art styles, and total complete messes <laughs> when it comes <laughs> to the files and making it work. You know, So I spend a lot of time just kind of doctoring stuff and babying stuff and try to if I have the time, I try to teach as well so that they can learn about what I'm doing to try to make this stuff work for them. And then once in a while, you know, there's always something needed. I just kind of jump in on, uh, so like I'll do lettering on something or I'll do colors on something or I'll do covers or variants or things like that. So um, I kind of just jump in wherever I'm needed on, on top of doing all the pre-press and on top of the, for the board games, which is a lot of production to manage. A single board game might have 600, you know, files related to it. If you mess one of them up, that's a ten thousand dollar, twenty thousand dollar mistake. It's it's really scary. Does it get um, confusing when you start? So I'm really lucky that them? we have been able to kind of limp along through this and get me a little bit of help. So I now have two employees that are kicking so much butt for me right now. Uh, Martha and Lex, they're they're great. And um, with COVID, they're working from home right now. So I get to come into the office and only see one or two faces because we try to keep it spread out and real sparse until things oh did i lose you for a second uh yeah my internet cut out i apologize still says we're live so i'm gonna go with us that we are still live somebody in the comments there maybe let us know oh look there's josh all by himself i'm sorry <laughs> josh <laughs> leave you hanging like that oh that's Make hilarious it hey it's the it's the new world kids you got to get used to weird stuff <laughs> happening right so, so true. crazy hey. crazy crazy um does it start to get confusing when stuff starts crossing over? Because now you've turned claim the game into a comic as well. Uh, it can. Yeah. It's just sometimes just talking about it. Somebody starts talking about claim and I'd be like, you've got to be more specific. There's claim, there's claim two, there's claim reinforcements, magic, claim reinforcements, fear, frost. Uh, there, there's uh, puzzles, claim puzzles. There's claim kingdoms. There's claim uh, song of iron vice issues, one, two, three, and four. So um, 
yeah, if somebody says claim, I, I never know what they're talking about anymore. But, <laughs> but that, that's one of the most exciting things about pro, uh, taking some of the game properties and, and bringing them into comics is watching this little world kind of grow. And games are amazing, but there's so much more story that you can't tell in the gameplay that you can expand upon through the comic books. Also, I think one of the coolest things about this is we get a chance to not compete with our competitors, but be friends and collaborators. So sometimes we have a game company, right? And other people have game companies and we're both trying to get the same customer sales. But when they have a really, really cool game that we just love and we're really big fans of, we can slide over to the comic book company and come shake hands and be like, let's collaborate and make a comic. And vice versa, when we see a, a, a comic book company that has a really cool property that we really love, one really huge one right now that I, we haven't announced yet, um, that we can bring over into our games and say, we need to make a game out of your book. And it's just a way to kind of embed ourselves in the, both the gaming and, and, and comic community. And what I'm finding is there is a bit of a division, a bit of a gap even though these are all just awesome nerds who love stuff and are passionate about it. And we're trying to build that bridge a little bit more. And uh, the Gloomhaven comic this year was a really good way to, to, to start that. Right, 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 right. That's fantastic fun. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's definitely a, you know, a bridge that needs to be built. It's, it's weird that there's not more of it, you know, out here, it's pretty popular in my, in our area, we've got board game cafes all over the place, just tons of them. And I'm see. I, I, this reminds me of what you were saying earlier about having shipments that are you know internationally sitting all all around the world. Is that uh, I too in last March was supposed to be Toronto Toronto Comic Con. So just a month or two before that, I had received the shipment for you know Toronto Comic Con. So yeah. I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of comic books, and I'm like. What, what do I do now? Like, you know, I had to figure something out. So I've still got, of course, most of those comic books. But, you know, as us guys who are used to being in the trenches, we could try to do something, I guess, right? So, you know, beforehand, unfortunately, all our comic book shops are closed. It's curbside pickup only. So there's only a certain amount of, you know, connection you could do. But I was able to get out and visit a few shops, you know, and bring them a few source point titles and just say hello and say, I hope things are going well. And to tell them, you know, there's there's retailer type deals going on on the net and this, this and that. And, uh, you know, there's there's uh, there seems to be a lot of appreciation just for, you know, trying to stay connected and, and you know, have that personal relationship. Because it's hard. Like, it must be hard because all us creators, or us, like, I shouldn't be saying all us creators, saying all the creators and all of us involved with SourcePoint in whatever capacity are missing the cons and missing each other more so than just the shows. We go for each other more than we go to, you know, completely geek out. Just it's mm. it's, it's an amazing thing. We get to do that together, right? So, you know, it, it's a struggle because there's a lot of people out there probably feeling pretty disconnected right now, you know? So true. And some of them I worry about sometimes and I, I need to check in on them and make sure they're doing okay. And this, all these professional relationships that we have where they go beyond that. I mean, everybody at Source Points is just a family, you know, we have all these creators all across the country and the world, but they're family and we really have real friendships. And when you take the conventions and the travel and the shared hotel rooms and the after con talks and parties and those deep dive conversations out of the picture. And all that's left is this professional relationship where I'm yelling at them to turn stuff in on time. It strains the relationships. I'm not saying that we're, we're damaging them, but it, I, I, I miss these people in a different way. Like I, I want to see you. I want to talk with you about, about the cool side of things, not just the business side of things. And yeah. um, luckily we, we find ways, you know, we find ways through the internet to kind of do that and keep that community going. And social media is probably keeping some people sane, probably driving others insane, but you know, <laughs> there's a balance. Yeah, there's definitely, it's been uh, strange to see the way it's bent different people because, you know, I mean, a lot of people have lost friends, gained friends, uh, gone through serious life changes, you know, um, it's been a really weird time and it's had a strange effect on people. Like I didn't know what to do. Cons were what I did. You know, I spend my days climbing trees 
you know, alone in the treetops, loving nature. And then on my weekends or whenever the, you know, a, a chance arose, I was out there with friends at cons, take that away. And it was like, Oh my God, what do I do? So I started walking the earth as everyone is well aware. And I've pretty much just been walking and hiking and lost like 60 pounds over the past year. And, you know, I'm going to be 44 soon and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I would have never seen myself doing this, but you know, what the hell else was there to do? And you, we were talking earlier before we came online here, you, you gave up the energy drinks, you started the running, you bought your first pair of sneakers. That's, that's awesome, man. Like it's feeling good. Yeah, it is. It really is. And I, I, there's a part of me that thinks had not all these horrible things not happened to the world that I wouldn't have found these other things or, or, uh, develop some the relationship I did or, or get, you know, get healthier, start changing lifestyles. And I don't, I don't like to, it's such a tough spot to be in. You don't want to be grateful for bad things happening to anyone, but you do see how much people can make the best of a bad situation, how you can find other ways to grow. Uh, yeah. And that's, what's great about it is it's not the opportunities that it gave us. It's, the human beings living through this and saying, I'm going to make some changes now in a time where the easiest thing to do is just shut down, not leave your couch, be glued to the news. Like I so often am and get depressed and yeah. eat whatever is conveniently <laughs> around. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's what's easy to do. Yeah. So it's not that like, Oh, I'm grateful that these horrible things happen, but I'm grateful that I found, I found ways to keep moving. In, in some other direction you kind of have to yeah i miss the travel though man i miss the, i miss the planes and the airports i miss the long long drives i miss that I miss the know, hotels the night and get, you start setting up the con 16 hours later when i you know yeah I miss yeah it. yeah it's hard man especially like i'm up here and you know i'm in a whole other country and you know i it's i feel i have felt so disconnected because you know, it's weird because a lot of the introverts are making a lot of jokes over the past year and they're, you know, it warranted, you know, that this is their time, right? They love that they don't have to see anybody, just stay at home, you know, but then there are those of us who aren't just, you know, middle ground. There's those of us who thrive on social activity. I thrive on it. I love right. people. I, it's, it's what I do. I, I, I schmooze, I hang out, I talk, I converse. And I love it. I love every bit of it. And, you know, I've not been able to do that for almost a year. And it's, it's, it, I still can't yet. Of course, it's too early to describe how it's affected me, but I know I'm affected, right? Like I know sure. I'm changed, like to a weird point. So, and there's an identity when you, when you've been doing this for a long enough time and you do it as often as you do, then there's a version of yourself that you, that you are at conventions if it's if you're someone who like like us who thrives on it i feel the most like me when i'm in those situations when yes. i'm telling somebody about this story or or the people who worked on it or or what i'm working on right now and and i love that and it you you feel like yourself and then when you're taken out of it it's like sometimes it's a nice break you're like oh great i can kind of just chill and just like shut down a little bit and not be so social and outward until the next weekend or the following one you know and and now it's like Oh, I'm not getting that back. How do I? Who? Who am I? Who am yeah. I when I'm yes. not in this situation? <laughs> oh my God! Absolutely, man. And what? Like for me, it's like you know, what do I do now? Right? Like, <laughs> you know, well, I I started my own tree company, and you know, for kind of something to do, right? And you know, thought I'd explore, and that's been great, and that's been fun, and you know, climbing away in the trees. But again, no shows. The shops aren't open here. We're in lockdown. I can't see anybody. Um, so I, like I said, I started walking, man. And, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't find the joy in anything for a while. Not that I was like severely depressed, but just depressed enough that I really, nothing was fun. Nothing was happy, like the TV shows, the comics, the even the podcasting. Like I was very infrequent this year just because I wasn't feeling it, you know. Not that I was just sitting on the couch moping. I just decided to walk in the woods instead. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I just I couldn't find a passion for anything, you know. But 
uh, the new year, I'm in a new place. I'm in a new studio. So, you know, I'm kind of trying, I'm trying to be, uh, you know, optimistic that we do have vaccines, you know, and there will be a new president on your side, which believe it or not is a huge relief for the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like I, I, as a, as a foreigner watching that shit yesterday was like a movie. Uh, most of the year has been like a movie, but yesterday especially was like, because I've been calling it for years, like a civil war is coming. And then it started happening. And I was like, oh, my God, like I've never wanted to be so wrong. It's, but uh, Yeah, right. And it's like, even though the, the, the path that led to this was so blatant and open in front of everyone, it didn't make this any easier to swallow, realizing that's really where we're at right now. Like we're taking a I don't want to go too into this, but we're taking this, this, this lawful democratic process that we base our entire nation around, and there are people who are trying to tear that down because they truly believe that that's the enemy now. Wow. That leaves our nation's identity in a weird place, and it also kind of makes us so separate from strangers that we don't want to meet new people anymore you know, right. because you don't know what they're, what's going on in their head. <laughs> You don't know what they think or what they believe. And, um, and that, that divide, it goes so much further than just, oh, I can't talk to my, my, my aunt at Thanksgiving anymore. It's, there's somebody who I could have sparked up a conversation with, but I'll never get to know what they're about because I'm afraid of people now. Yeah. It, like that's, that, that's like a new thing that's creeping into our lives. And that's, that's a scary repercussion that we're going to face. And I don't know how long that's going to last. I'm well, glad. we can hope that maybe things have literally been broken enough that it's going to lead to something new. That's what I'm trying to hope for. I'm trying to literally, you know, what gave me hope yesterday was those senators who changed their minds about objecting, uh, even though they were kind of scared into it. Still, a lot of them were like, OK, we can't have this. It finally right. got to a point where they were like, at least we can have this. Sorry. Uh, Lee Farnsworth is asking, where is home base for you guys? Uh, I'm here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Uh, watching the madness that's happening down south there uh, while Josh is in the home base, uh, the Saginaw. homeland of uh, so, Michigan. Michigan, yeah, Saginaw, Michigan. So we're, for those who, uh, who aren't from Michigan, the, in, in the U.S., Michigan's really, it's like a, it's a little peninsula jutting up into Canada. So um, we, we see our Canadian brothers and sisters quite a bit. Or we, at least we used to. <laughs> we used to. God damn. It's so but, hard uh, that you're off like four hours away from me and I can't come. Right. I can't see the beautiful new you studio. Haven't I haven't seen it. Yeah. Man. So I'm right now, uh, I was just working right up until this. So I'm still at work. Uh, this is where I get to come. And it's, we got a bunch of desks around here where people are designing and making cool things happen. And we've got um, our warehouse attached to the back. And right next door is a comic book store. It's a pretty cool gig. Not it's cool. almost it's almost good timing that you, the headquarters opened at a time like this because there are you know that certain handful of you who are there and can be working you know obviously different amounts at different times of what we've gone through but uh, i think it helps the rest of us to know that you're all there and you know that in person at least you know that small little handful of people is feeling that connection and trying to spread it out through the internet from the headquarters to everybody i think it's you know it's definitely helped a lot you know it's helped me try and stay connected but uh you know it's crazy all right um let's talk about oh sorry now she says okay cool neighbors up north and uh, that's too uh she is in ohio if oh, lee right. is a she i guess lee could be a he or a she i can't see your picture enough lee are you a he or a she because I, I don't know. Unless you're both. That's cool, too, man. We absolutely don't mind at all. Um, okay, let's talk some stuff. What's coming out? What are you working on? What do you want to shoot out there? There's so much coming. I can't even believe it. It's, uh, it's maddening. Like There really is. Um, I, so I'm actually I'm working on a top secret project right now. Uh, it's a writing project. And uh, I can't talk about it. I've got a meeting about it tomorrow, but it's a licensed, licensed property um, that I was very, very familiar with before the opportunity arose. So I'm really excited to be writing a comic book miniseries for it. And um, it's, uh, I, can, I can't tell you anything about the story or what it is, but I can give you a little like taste of it. It's, 
it's supernatural. So you're going to get some cool uh, ghosty horror stuff. You're going to get some, uh, some historical fiction, um, which I really enjoy writing. So that's cool. If anybody's read Rampant, it's a historical fiction as well. Um, a, a supernatural or, or a horror story in, embedded in that, but there's a lot of real true history in it. So I'm getting to do all that research, a deep dive and research right now for that. And um, I am working with an artist who has also done something very, very cool for Source Point Press. And this will be uh, his second uh, miniseries with us. I can't tell you who he is yet. That's okay. That's exciting stuff, man. But yeah, so I'm doing that in the background. Um, I've also done just recently. Lee is a dude, by the way. Sorry. Oh, right on. Hi, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else. Uh, so I'm doing, for, for me personally, like that's what I'm really into right now. But, um, but I'm doing all sorts of stuff. There's so many things happening around here. You know, we finally, finally wrapped up everything on Franklin and Ghost board game. Or it's, a, it's like a card game. Oh, actually. can't it's, wait for that, too. Yeah. And it's changed a lot from the early versions. It's, it's better than ever. We just wrapped up all the design on it. Um, uh, like I said, I've got two people um, working with me now on the production team. They're both amazing. And they both worked on this uh, in, in one part. So uh, Martha did a ton of awesome graphic design on this. So she made the rule book look like it's a comic. So Franklin's telling you how to play the game in character. Nice. Um, and then Lex, the newbie, uh, she has not gotten to work a single day in this office yet. But I can't wait until she can be here in person. She, does, she designed uh, a 3D, the 3D model for a game piece. There's a little game piece that comes with it and it's Franklin's uh, paw holding Ghost's skull. Cool. Uh, yeah, so, so anybody who doesn't know, Franklin and Ghost is a comic book series written by Garrett Gunn, art by Nick Tourus. And uh, it's just blown up and created a whole universe in comics. So we've got uh, the Warcorns, uh, which is in previews right now. If you're not familiar with Warcorns, that's something you can pre-order. It's really fun. It takes place in the Franklin and Ghost universe. It's military uh, unicorns, all super buff and, <laughs> and yeah. violent and action-packed. Definitely not for kids. Uh, and, uh, and, and we're kind of expanding on this world. And we've got this animated series in development that was announced by IGN uh, right before all this stuff happened with COVID. But... Uh, that's got a really cool cast. Uh, Sean Schemmel, who's the voice of Goku from Dragon Ball Z. He's, he's doing Franklin's voice. Uh, Ghost is played by Billy Bob Thornton, Academy Award winner. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Veronica <laughs> Taylor's doing... Um, Crazy. Uh, who was the original voice of Ash Ketchum. Is, and uh, April O'Neil as well, in, uh, one of the TMNT animated series, is doing Delilah, the, main, the female lead. And then the villain is played by uh, Christopher Sabat, who is All Might in My Hero Academia, also played Vegeta and Piccolo. So it's just incredible, mind-blowing cast. And we're all yeah. so excited about yeah. that. Yeah, you see him? You see him grinning? Yeah. Yeah, he's <laughs> grinning at those names. Uh, sorry, who is the guy? I just used Cameo for his birthday. And uh, who, sorry, who was it again? Do you remember his name? Chitaroki. The, you don't remember his real name. I'm blanking the actor, on his real the name. Actor the actor who plays Todoroki? Yeah. That's cool. Oh, I'm totally blanking out on his name. But uh, yeah, I got a video shout out from Todoroki to him. Uh, did he do it in the Todoroki voice? He did it first. He did like, and then he just, and then he did part. He was awesome. He did incredible. And it That's was, great. it was very affordable. And uh, yeah, highly recommend Cameo to and, like, it's not just all those crazy celebrities you see on the commercials. Like you can find like very affordable, cool people. I think it was like, I'm not going to say, but it was, you know, it was very, <laughs> it was very affordable. Um, you know, it's a few dollars, but not anything, you know, unreasonable. And yeah, and it takes a few days and they do it up and then they just send it to you and you, you show it That's off awesome. and it's, it's super cool. This kid is, yeah, it was, he, he, he grew growing up. You know, you remember what a horror freak this kid was. I, I used to tell you about yep. it all the time. It's like one day this switch happened and anime just filled his head. And mm. uh, yeah, it's all about that stuff these days. And what are we excited for? The new season of what is on Sunday? Oh, no, it's a new episode. New episode of what? Attack on Titan? Yeah. What, what the, what's the new season we're in? Season four. Season four. So that's something we're looking forward to. Him and I just binged uh, Avatar, Last Airbender. Oh, right on. Have you seen that series? I've only seen a little bit of it. Early, early, like season one stuff. 
I never got it. It kind of seemed a little cheese, not even like regular anime. And but the fans were so diehard. Then I watched it, man. Now I get it. Like I can't. Yeah. I, I still couldn't even explain it, but I get it. Like the show right, fans are diehard. It's amazing. It's so much fun. Like, and I get why they hated the movie too. Like the movie wasn't so bad, but they, they screwed up some stuff, huh? Did you know Avatar is, is technically not an anime because it wasn't made in Japan? Is really are those the lines that they draw nowadays? It has to literally be made in Japan. Yeah, I think that's silly. I think it's become a style unto itself. Because we used, do you remember when we used to call it Japan anime? Like when, like back in the day, you know, it yeah, was, Jap- and then it just kind of morphed into anime. But you know, it used to be Japan anime. That's what we called it in the Akira days, right? There is a there is that hardcore. So I mean, we we get pitches all the time where people are like, oh, I'm pitching you a manga. And I'm like, I'm sorry, uh, you, if you are trying to sell this to true manga fans, they're going to say, how dare you call this a manga if you are not a Japanese creator living in Japan. So wow. you can say it's manga influenced or manga style, but you can't sell it as manga, or especially not to a publisher who has to try to deal with manga fans. Because that matters to them, you know, makes a big difference. But um, we, we've got some stuff that's kind of inching towards some of that style for the, probably the first time ever in Source Points history. So right now there's a series called Eighth Immortal that you can pre-order. And uh, the covers are gorgeous. The covers are these just beautiful paintings. But, um, but the interior art, is, it leans a little bit towards a manga style. And it's something that I don't think we've ever published anything quite like it before. And then uh, coming up later this year, we'll be tackling Yuki versus Panda. We'll be putting out every issue in order. It's pretty exciting. I actually wrapped the solicitations for it to go out to Diamond uh, today. So that's gonna be- I think, we, I think you just broke that. I think that is news, actually. Yeah. So if anybody didn't know that, Yuki versus Panda. Graham, I'm sorry. I was going to have you on the show and make a big hoopla <laughs> about it. You know what? We still will. Um, because honestly, I'm so proud of this fact. Um, <laughs> it was something that I was passionate about for a bit. Um, you were. You pushed it. You're the reason. You're the real reason we're published. I, I want to go that far, but I mean, it was, it's, I believe in it and I believe in uh, this book and I believe in Graham and uh, the grind that he is and uh, that he's always put himself through and uh, he's an animal. Um, I'm excited to expand its distribution, get it all across America. Absolutely. It's been a huge success. Anybody up here in Canada knows Yuki versus Panda and uh, you know, it's a, it's a homegrown, you know, love affair. It's, it's been on for a while. Volume four up here. Um, we're starting fresh with single issues through source point though, I believe. Yes. Yep. That's right. So in, in uh, March, people will be able to pre-order issue number one through their local comic shop in U S Canada, UK parts of Europe. And um, yeah, I mean, you're right. There's a ton of content just right waiting and we got it all stockpiled, but it's going to be yeah. put it out there. Oh, it's, it's out there. Uh, it, that's a huge surprise Panda. exclusive for all you folks out there. Uh, Yuki versus Panda. Um, and that ca- that comes out of a, a manga type conversation. It's not a, a manga book, uh, but definitely inspired. Um, I, I'll drop just quickly. It, it's so simple. Uh, a little girl with her Jap- uh, her samurai grandpa. Uh, oh, that was kind of a little <laughs> there. Um they go to the zoo uh, where she kind of has a, a, a negative altercation with a baby panda. That baby panda grows up to escape the zoo and seek revenge. And this turns into an epic revenge adventure that is just, I'm so excited to see it uh, retold. And, uh, you know, for everybody else down there to get their, uh, get their eyes on it and, uh, you know, the whole thing. Because uh, I love it. I think it's great. It's, it's Graham is so talented. Um, I think it's fantastic. So I'm very excited like to, for everybody to, to think see of it. The, the family guy fights with Peter and the chicken. <laughs> 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 it's just big drawn out epic battles that take place all these different places. It reminds me of that. Yeah. I yeah. love it. There, I don't know if you've seen them. Um, I'll have to get Graham to send them to you. This is also Graham Miserac, by the way, um, uh, behind, uh, an, oh my God, I'm blanking on artists. They help me out, Josh. Who else is on the book? Um, She's amazing. I don't, I don't want to get it wrong. I've got so many names jumping in through my head right now. Um, uh, I can look it up. 
either way, they made up uh, these just promo posters one year for the book. They're pretty cool. I've seen some JPEGs. Oh, you have seen them. Okay. They're based on actual movies and stuff, but just yeah. they're done in an epic, epic style. That's absolutely amazing. But A.L. Jones. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, yeah, there you go, kids. Uh, something I want to do since we've got Josh here. Now, I've been in the studio now for what, just over a month have we been here or something like this, uh, our brand new studio space. Uh, which is, as of yet, unnamed. We need a name for the studio. Uh, we recently moved out of the Smoking Pod studio. Uh, previous to that was our original home, the L5J studio in Clarkson, Ontario. Clarkson, what, what? Um, so now we're here. So I'll give you a little uh, drop. We're, we're downtown. We're in Hamilton, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Uh, and if you know the show or you know me at all, that's all you're going to need to know. Uh, the building that we're in is actually very cool. It's called St. Eloy Court, uh, and it's, it was built in 1919. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's super, super old, and uh, it's right. super, super cool. Uh, actually, you see behind me uh, where the stuff is on the ledge here? Yeah. Right? That used to be the fireplace. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, because all the, there's 32 units in the building, and each of them had a fireplace. And I've seen other units where it's actually still exposed, and it looks absolutely gorgeous, right? But for some reason, they had to, like, do ours up. But uh, very, very cool stuff. So I need a name for the studio. I'm going to let the fans decide. But unfortunately, because shipping is as expensive as ever... I'm yep. only going to be able to let the Canadian fans decide. So I apologize. You could still enter. Uh, maybe someday I can get the prize to you. Maybe Ooh. I might ship it to you if it's not crazy expensive. Or if the prize is worth it to you, you could pay for the shipping. I don't know. We'll work something out. But I just want to have a fun little contest. Uh, you know, a, a, you know, just to name the studio. Why not let the, you know. So what I'll do is I'm going to take a bunch of suggestions on the Facebook page, on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever. I'll make some posts. I'll make some polls. Uh, I'll take a whole bunch of, uh, you know, suggestions. And then I'll take, say, the top three, top five, and I'll decide. Me and, me and the Padawan here, we will decide on the name of our new studio from your suggestions. And whoever we pick uh, is going to win a little something, something. What they're going to win here is a very, very special Josh Werder prize package. This prize package will consist of Hank Steiner, number one. I got to figure out how to show comics. First better. issue. I got this light going That's on. That's such a fun series. Oh, so much fun. It's also going to come with issue number two. <laughs> Hank Steiner, so much fun. It's also going to come with Jay Werner Presents Classic Pulp. Oh, wow. Detectives, yeah. right on. Lots of Those fun stuff. Out. Uh, I've got a couple. Uh, and then we're going to toss these up. Uh, you explain these, Josh, because Canadians are very unfamiliar with these books. These are the oh. Holliston books. I would be so happy to. Um, yes. So uh, if you have Shudder, if anybody's got Shudder, it's a streaming service for horror films. There is one sitcom on Shudder. And it's called Holliston. And it is a sitcom for horror fans. It's essentially like, um, it's like what Big Bang Theory would be, but for, for horror nerds. So it's loads of horror movie references, horror comedy, uh, horror movie guest appearances. Um, there's like Kane Hodder episodes. And uh, Tony Todd has a fantastic episode. Right. Danielle Harris, like loads of just legends in horror. And it's really, really funny. And it has a lot of heart. And it is uh, written and starring uh, Adam Green, who is a movie director who uh, did the Hatchet movies and Victor Crowley and Spiral and uh, Frozen. Not the Disney one, but the one where they're <laughs> stuck in the ski lift with the wolves. Um, uh, great movie. And uh, Joe Lynch is the co-star, who is also a big movie director. Um, he broke into horror really big with uh, Wrong Turn 2. And then he did uh, Mayhem with Steven Yeun. I love that movie. It's so phenomenal. Uh, Everly with Sam Hayek. Uh, yeah, he's fantastic. Uh, anyway, two very prolific people in the world of, of film uh, star in this sitcom. And after there were two seasons uh, that were made, and then from there, uh, these graphic novels pick up those, the stories with those characters. And so there are two of them right now. There's Friendship is Tragic, uh, and there is Carnival of Carnage. And while no 
it's been kind of leaked and hinted at, but I can't tell you anything official other than, yes, there is a third one in the works right now with myself and Steve Shar and Greg Wright. And I can't tell you the title or show you anything from it yet, but that will, that announcement, that the cover announcement will be done really soon. Um, but yeah, so you don't have to watch the show to read the books. They're totally standalone. If you like horror references and Easter eggs, I challenge you to find all of the horror movie and horror novel Easter eggs in those two graphic novels. I can think of one page that has about a dozen on it just by fun. itself. It's fun. It is so much fun to go through and try to find everything that we hid in those books. So there's people you'll find in the backgrounds of panels. You'll find myself in one of the panels. You'll find David Hayes. Um, uh, yeah, it, there's loads and loads of cool stuff hidden in that book. It's a lot of fun. Also, Keith Snyder from Twisted Sisters in the show and in the book, and he plays basically a parody of himself uh, named Lance Rocket, and it's hysterical. Uh, Bill Mosley, he's in the show and the comic. Seth Green, um, lots of really cool people. And it's been such a joy to be a part of this. Man, I remember we flew out to California and we did uh, a signing for when Friendship is Tragic first came out. Oh, yeah. We did a signing with the cast and crew of the show. And the line was out the door, down the street. We were in Burbank at uh, Dark Delicacies, which is like a cool hotspot place for people to visit when they go to California. It's like one of those bucket list tourist type, like awesome, it's a bookstore, but it's really cool. And um, they do awesome signings like this one. These people, it was, it was amazing. They were, some of them were crying. Uh, I got a lot of hugs. There were people who were asking me to sign like their show posters. And I was like, you know, I didn't work on the show at all, right? Like I only worked on the comic. And, uh, and they're like, it doesn't matter. Like you're part of this, this family and like you're keeping this, this, this Aww. property alive and these characters in my life. And you don't know what this means to me. I was just blown away by how hardcore Holliston fans are. Just that's, amazing people. That's awesome. And, yeah, it's super, super fun. For anybody who hasn't read them, you gotta gotta pick them up. So and if you or you're gonna win them right now, or you you're come gonna up with win a really them. awesome name. Or you're gonna win them. So you will get this wonderful Josh Werder uh, comic book package uh, for whomever we select as the best suggestion for the name of the new studio. We've already got some rolling in that are already uh, pretty good. Oh wait, your your uh, your significant other. Uh, that's so cool. Old buildings are the best. Oh, Brie, that's cool. Yes, it is a very cool building. We even got like the pigeons around the top. It's it's very cool. Uh, what Crystal it, Hope, the brick? Pod Crash, Matthew Knoll, Red Five Studios. That's cool. That's so cool. It feels like it should already be taken. <laughs> right? <laughs> Studio from Hell and Beyond, Pod Crash Pad, the Court Studio. These are all great. I'm going to collect all of these and I'm going to put them together. Or we'll choose some. We'll do a poll and uh, however we can. If you are in Canada, I will ship these right to you. If you're in the States, we'll figure something out, you know. It's yeah, really you know, nuts how this has States, done stuff, eh? Like shipping is insane now. If you're in the States, I'll put together the same exact package and I'll ship it out. Thank you, Josh. That works out perfectly. Uh, yeah, it really is. Because it's just honestly, there's been lots of stuff I've wanted to buy or haven't had a chance to read just because the shipping is more than the product. Oh, definitely. And it's like out of out of control. But if anybody wants uh, also is in the community, uh, you know, you've heard that I'm in Hamilton. Uh, I have a lot of source point stuff. If you want some or you're interested in any, I can put together little bundles for you or something. Um, but uh, Franklin and Ghosts, which you heard about, I've got copies of that. Uh, I've got a lot of copies of Nora Volume 1. Um, volume 2, I believe. Is it in previews yet or coming soon to previews? Volume 2 has already been in previews and it is already in shops. Oh, it's in shops. Yes, we're at that point. Uh, um, like last month, I think. Yeah, real, real recent. Wonderful. Very, very cool. So yeah, that's what we're going to do, kids. Um, so I'll put that poll up on the Facebook and stuff and we will work that out. Uh, but yeah, lots of cool stuff. I'm hoping to play this. Right here. There it goes. I'm hoping to get a game of this into uh, oh. Fantastic Factories. There's lots to try, lots to do. You gonna play that this is one sold with out Let's worldwide go. right now. Is it? That game is so hard to get right now. Uh, we've been getting tons of even stores and retailers are asking for them. We have there. We have a new print run in the works right now. So hopefully, shipping times have been kind of wonky lately we, we hope everything comes out soon but right now that game is so sought after 
there may be a small handful of them available up in mm. Canada. And I mean a small handful, like a literal handful. You don't have a single copy left in our warehouse. So that's pretty cool. That's crazy. <laughs> I think I literally have like three or four or something like that that uh, were shipped out for Toronto Comic Con. And, you know, we didn't get to sell them. So here they are. But eventually uh, they're still, you know, in their nice plastic wrapping and will be played by somebody wonderfully someday. Uh, once we figure stuff out it's like yeah kids when the when the shows come back uh come on out and i'll see you there and it's going to be tons of fun so are we going to see what the padawan's been up to for a bit sure. now who is this i even forgot the name you forgot the name just some random anime character i don't know if anybody recognizes this character oh that looks great if anybody recognizes that let us know the boys already forgot <laughs> um but yeah this is his new toned paper pad uh, with the brown paper that he's picked up for pencil crayons. Nice. Um, so he does his pencil crayoning and is, did you put some Copic on here too? Yeah. Yeah. So this is Copic on pencil crayon paper there. And that's what the Padawan's been up to this week. So, uh, I can go get my other stuff. Well, we'll do a, we'll do a show you off show sometime soon. How about we do that? Okay. Does that sound good? Awesome. But thank you for drawing that and finishing that off for us and letting us uh, take a look. It's very, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wonder, because he's always been a pretty good drawer, um, but then the quarantine hit a year ago, and he was home for so many months, six months or whatever, and all he did was draw. Draw, 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 draw. And now he's at a point where some of the stuff coming out of him, I'm just like, okay, what's yeah. going on here? You and want to uh, and look, people are, <laughs> yeah, look, people are saying great job and awesome and stuff. And, uh, but yeah, but I wonder if he hadn't got to spend all that time, you know, would he be half as good as he's gotten? And it almost makes you wonder a little bit about the education system. And if we spent a little more time, you know, focusing on what kids are good at, or at least what they love, maybe they'll get better at it. Or I don't know, mm -hmm. just, right. you know, I'm not trying to trash education systems. We have a wonderful one here and I'm very happy with the school that he's in, but just to see how good he got after that period of doing nothing but that it's, it shows you, you know, it's kind of like hundreds of years ago when great masters would just concentrate all day on one skill, you know, for years. So, yeah. Years and years. Uh, you know, there you go, kids. Uh, 2021, an elegant weapon has returned. Mr. Werner, thank you so much for joining us on our first show of the year, my friend. Oh, so happy to. I miss you, man. I miss you too, man. Uh, you know, we miss everybody out there. Everybody, uh, stay connected, send your love. Uh, if there's someone you haven't thought about, um, and I'm not just talking to Source Point Press, uh, because I know that's happening, but again, if you're out there and you know, you think of people that haven't been connected. Uh, don't just think of the people that you would usually think of who are maybe introverts and such, but there are those who are struggling uh, with the lack of social aspect because they, you know, a lot of us really need that connection and for it to go away, there's probably a lot of people out there feeling really, really lost right now. There's uh, a lot so of heavy things happening and everybody in their own way is kind of dealing with it alone. Mm -hmm. So now, now more than ever, don't let them bear the weight of this stuff everybody we all do it we got to share that weight so yeah i'm with you check in on people uh yeah kids uh thanks for checking in with us we greatly appreciate it we'll be back next week with something new and something exciting uh graham Mizorak, <laughs> congratulations uh, yeah, you i'm so proud of this so fantastic i hope I like you're watching to matt noel as well who's been editing this new release of that because he was championing that project hardcore and oh, wanted to bring it Matt, here. you know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I, I got to spend, Matt was there with me in Vancouver. Uh, me, Matt, and Frank Gogol was there for a little bit. But, uh, you know, it was so exciting for us because he was fairly new into it. And it was new in Vancouver. And, man, to, to completely clean that table I've never done that. No. I've never been at a show where that has happened. Like it, and it was, it was a crazy feeling. Every game, every mouse pad, every goddamn thing. I even gave the guys, I won't say their name, the, the esteemed publishing company next to us. I gave them my bag to take their excess home. Cause I didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very, very cool. Uh, that's Josh Werner kids. Check out source point press uh, all over the place. Oxide media, deep water games, N three art and design. 
uh, good times indeed. That, kids, is all we are going to have this week on An Elegant Weapon. Take it easy.